What is up everyone? So today I have a DIY project for you. Uh, it's going to involve this Coleman um, water heater. And uh, there's a few issues that I, I have with this water heater. And we're going to solve one of those today. So what we're going to do is take the original water heater battery pack and swap it out with something that's going to allow you to get more runtime uh, and also not allow you to you know kill your battery while you're on off season when you're not maintaining this so let's get into this diy project and see what it's all about okay so when dealing with this if you want to modify your current one because it broke down or whatever the outside of this connector here that plugs into this is going to be the ground okay so you basically take your um, lead on your ohm tester or your multimeter, whatever you want to call it, uh, put it on uh, uh, ohm readout and then uh, take one lead, put it on the outside and then take the other lead and touch one of these two wires. The moment it rings out will tell you that uh, which one is the actual ground and then the opposite one will of course be your positive which would be the inside. Um, same thing for this, I don't want to tell you that the white is the ground or it's the positive only because there's so many versions of this that it may you know they may have switched the leads so what you need to do is the outside's the ground of course remember one of these is a false uh, spring so it's just to take up space in your cigarette lighter and then the other one's actually hooked up and uh, so if you touch one and it doesn't work and then the other one does don't be uh, discouraged by that. It's just a space saver. So make sure you check them both. And then one should ring out on one of these two wires. The center right here, the center plunger is actually the positive, And then that should ring out with one of these two wires as well. So this is a 14 gauge wire. Okay. And this is 18 gauge wire. The original stuff was 18 gauge. And then once I figured out which one was ground, for the wires, then I splice them together, uh, soldered it, and then heat shrunk it together, okay? So you decide that, hey, it's not holding a charge, so you need to buy a new battery, right? So you come over here, you gotta unscrew this. And if you buy multiple of these battery packs that come with this, you're gonna realize that it's gonna suck because you gotta bring a screwdriver with you and then um, try to pry this open. I don't have fingernails, so it's a little bit hard. Uh, you're going to probably want to have a flat blade on hand or a knife uh, because you got to rotate it out. Okay. Then you could slide out this battery pack, unclip it from here, and then you have a battery pack. So if you have a few of these, I mean, you're not going to want to unscrew this every time you need to swap out the pack. Uh, so you might even leave this off and then just swap it out and plug it in um, But mind you these are like 39 bucks or $49 or something like that some ridiculous price and they're three 18650 batteries in there But there's no way to charge it unless you got a charger that you could connect to this type of wire or You plug something like this in and then plug it directly into your uh, kit and run it that way but of course if you're getting ready to go camping I mean, you're not going to want to run this in your car and charge it, you know, <laughs> the day before. Or, uh, I mean, I guess if you bought one of these wires that plug into your house, you're okay because you just plug it in the time you're ready to go, but you're not uh, maintaining it. That's the thing that's going to kill your battery is not maintaining it. All right. And then mind you, a cord like this, I think are like $30 or the ones that plug into your house are like 30 bucks. So you decide that this is going to get expensive um, and it's just going to suck to maintain okay so this the idea behind this right was to allow you to uh, insert any 18650 batteries you have on the fly all right let's go over the build why i chose three cells okay so this has to be ran in series um, this battery's ran in series 3.7 volt batteries times three will get you 11.1 volts is what this is outputted at. So I had to replicate the same thing, run it in series to get the 11.1 volts 
which is what this is required of in, uh, in order to make it run. Uh, you might be asking why I didn't do six cells. Well, I wanted to give you the ability to run three so that way you could regulate how long of a runtime you're gonna get out of this. So if you brought, say, nine batteries to the, your camp, all right, and I made you do six cells, well, now you can't run your thing after those six cells are up. At least you would have uh, nine, nine cells. You could do uh, three uh, reach, refills of the battery pack, right? So if you're running the thing and you're realizing, hey, it's lasting an hour, you guys need to cut back on the showers or the wash time and stuff, at least you have uh, six more cells that you could put in there uh, and gauge your time and uh, how much you're using. That's the reason why I chose three, um, just to give you the flexibility, right? Uh, also, if you, if you were just to buy one of these cases by themselves, to house these batteries a lot of them don't be fooled but a lot of them will not run uh the 14 gauge wire like i ran well uh, i want to say all of them because i haven't found one that runs 14 gauge wire uh they all run 18 or 22 gauge wire a lot of the ones that i've been finding are running 22 the ones that are really pricey will run maybe 18. Um, a lot of people are complaining about the 18 gauge wire and 22 uh, but their application's not this. The applications that they run them on uh, is creating more of an amp draw, so it, more, it, it heats up the wire a lot. So I just made it 14 and, and I'm done with the whole, you know, how many amps this thing is gonna draw to what the wire's gonna be able to allow. Uh, so I just beefed it up and uh, gave you the best that I could do for the, the draw, so that way you're, you don't have no complaints. Also, this is silicone based wire, so it's real flexible and uh, malleable. It's real nice. It's not gonna break down anytime soon. Another thing is uh, if you decide to get this, uh, if you decide to make it yourself, remember you have to run it in series to get the 11.1 volt battery, but also these ends. Um, these are the mini ends for RC uh, style setup and you're gonna have to buy a crimper so that way you could crimp the little inserts onto your wire. You're gonna need a, a soldering gun. You're gonna need heat shrink and uh, that's about it. And then of course this, and then uh, some type of housing, which no one sells a housing for these. All right, so for the housing, when I decided to create this, um, I made it friction fit, okay? So that way it, it you have a, a little bit of push and then it goes in um, then i decided i wanted to make it a little bit more uh, stronger than that so i added two magnets uh, so that way it makes sure that it doesn't come apart uh, the reason why i didn't make it too strong so i didn't go with too strong of a magnet is because the whole purpose of this is to be able to exchange your batteries or change them out whenever you feel like it if you have it too like too connected um, just like how this has a screw and you're trying to pry on this uh, over time you're just gonna get frustrated with the product and uh, be mad because it's like the whole purpose of it is to make it easy right and then also the whole purpose of it is to make things easy when you're camping so that way you don't have to think about it anyone could do this you know you don't have to have someone muscling those magnets apart especially because magnets are only weak on shear, okay? So if this thing were to slide, of course I could make it uh, a stronger magnet because you could slide it. But pulling it straight apart is a lot more difficult um, if you had a stronger magnet. So this isn't going nowhere. Uh, it's really good uh, set, set in place. So that's that. Now, uh, the way I designed it is you just plug and play. Okay, so you line up these, plug it into the connector like so. You have an option um, to leave this out like this, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little slot. I created this, keeping in mind that people probably don't have tools. So once they unscrew this with a Phillips, all right, they could leave that off and then utilize it this way. I made it long enough to show you where I'm gonna put it, but 
if you do have tools or a file or something, I, I know a lot of you, uh, your wives or your girlfriends, they have nail files, you know, to file down their nails. So maybe you'll sneak one of those out and uh, cut a notch out of here, all right? It'll allow you to utilize this in the same manner that, you know, that this would be stock. But what, what it does is it'll allow you to fish this wire out. So when you connect this back to here, right, this wire will be sticking out. And now you have the option to plug in this battery pack or this battery pack. So if you do, so if you do decide to um, purchase this from me, it's gonna also come with Velcro. So that way you could attach this anywhere, all right? Whether or not you wanna attach it here or on the top, it's totally up to you. I give you enough cable to do so and uh, move it out of the way wherever it is you wanna stick this, all right? Keep in mind, if you do decide to put it on the top, make sure this is like all the way to the edge, all right? And then when you stick it, make sure this edge is in line with this front face of the handle. Don't put it right underneath it because you will not be able to lift this out very easily. You're gonna be fighting it, all right? So what you need to do is move it flush with the edge so that way you could just lift it straight up. Also keep in mind when uh, doing so, you're only gonna be able to grab on one side of the handle if this is right here, which is fine because you could still get a grip, all right? But you also have the option to put it here. If you put it underneath, then you're gonna have to unvelcro it every time. And then also you could get a grip here a little bit, but it's gonna impede your actual grip. So I do recommend the end to stick out further. Also, you could run it even this way. You could plug it in from the backside and run it out the back. So then that way you just pull it out this way. However it is you wanna do it, it's totally up to you. The reason why I couldn't get it in here was because I would have to cut the original section out that would hold this battery. And most of you aren't gonna wanna do that. And then you would have to cut out the back uh, part of it, which will expose some of the heater. Uh, and to me, that's going to be dangerous. Uh, if I tell you to do that, because, uh, these things can catch on fire. So I decided the safest way is to mount it somewhere here. All right. Totally up to you where you're going to mount it. Just make sure it's out of the areas where heat is going to radiate out. Once you decide where you're going to locate this, uh, the moment of truth to make sure it works, right? So I'm gonna turn this on, it should turn green. It's gonna fault out, so the red light will turn on. Um, and that's only because no water's running through it, so it won't allow you to start it. But we'll, I'll show you that everything works. It turns green, everything's kosher, right? I, I won't be able to start it, of course, because of that issue. You can hear the igniter kicked on, and then it turned red because there's no water running through it. Um, so given all this setup, if you do decide to make it yourself, good. I mean, that's great for you. Uh, just remember, make sure you don't run the 22 gauge wire that they come with uh, because it's just not gonna work out for you. I think this thing's gonna draw too much amperage, especially because it's a heater. So keep that in mind, uh, but it might. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're interested in one that I created uh, and I get enough interested people in this, uh, I'll post more. I only have, I think, five of them right now, only because I wanna see who's interested. Um, most people aren't gonna have the ability to solder stuff, crimp it, because you gotta buy tools to crimp, uh, to solder, and then heat shrink, you're gonna have to buy that. There's a lot of stuff you gotta buy if you're if you're only gonna make one, it may be pricey uh, if you decide to buy it and do it yourself. Um, so I'm gonna give the ability for you to purchase one. If they sell quick, then I'll make more. If they don't, I'll know people are making in their own, so that's great. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you are interested, uh, I only got, like I said, I think five, so buy them quick. A lot of you might not think uh, 3D print it is robust or uh, solid. So this is one of my earlier designs that I created. 
and I'm gonna show you how actually how strong this actually is. Okay, so I'll take a hammer and beat it. Okay, nothing's cracking. I'm gonna end up dropping it on the floor and show you. You will not be able to break it with your hands very easily, even after it's been broken. As you can see, I'm really prying on it and it's still, it'll flex, but as you can see, it's not breaking. And that's after I broke it. So that's gonna complete today's video. If this video was helpful, definitely give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. If you wanna see content like this and other content I'll be posting in the near future since I do a lot of DIY um, modification projects, uh, definitely stay tuned for that and consider subscribing. Until next time, I'll see y'all in the next one.